We are all set for the third round of the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. The conference finals are about to begin. Today, I'm going to give you my preview and predictions for the Eastern and Western Conference Finals. And that's coming up next. Welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams, so if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So the conference finals are set to begin. Round three is about to get underway. We have the Boston Bruins doing battle with the Carolina Hurricanes in the east, and we have the San Jose Sharks doing battle with the St. Louis Blues in the west. So we're going to do a quick preview, and I'll give you my predictions on each series. So as I preview each series, I'm going to give you a recap of what each team has accomplished so far in the playoffs. Take a look at their stats, and I'll give you my thoughts on how they match up and who's going to win. Now let's get started with the Eastern Conference Final with the Bruins and the Hurricanes. So let's jump in here and take a look at the Boston Bruins playoffs so far. So here's a quick recap of the Bruins. Obviously, they started off round one doing battle with the Toronto Maple Leafs. They won a long, hard-fought seven-game series. Of course, round two, they just wrapped up defeating the Columbus Blue Jackets in a six-game series. Uh, earlier in the series, it did look like Columbus might stand a chance to win, or maybe it might go seven, but slowly the Bruins kind of took over and ended up winning that one in six games. Now let's take a look here at some of their key team statistics here over the course of the playoff season. Goals four per game, they're averaging 3.08 goals, which is third best amongst playoff teams. And then goals against per game in the playoffs, they're averaging 2.15 which is the stingiest in the NHL. I do think it's fair to say Tuka Rask has been playing awesome, and the Bruins blue liners have been pretty solid as well. Now, from a special team standpoint, their power play has been clicking at a really strong rate, 28.6 so far in these playoffs, which is the best amongst playoff teams. And on the PK, they have a pretty solid rating of 83.8%, which is sixth best, but still pretty solid, if I must say so here. Now, the other key stat I want to take a look at as we recap these as well, even though it's not a playoff stat, is their winning percentage from January 1st to the end of the regular season. If you take a look at all the remaining teams, they were some of the hottest teams down the stretch. The Boston Bruins had a 709 winning percentage from January 1 to the end of the regular season, which was the third best amongst NHL teams. So you will see a trend here amongst all four of these remaining teams. They were some of the best ones down the stretch here heading into the playoffs. Now let's jump over and take a look at the same set of stats for the Carolina Hurricanes. So the Carolina Hurricanes so far have had a pretty terrific playoffs here. They knocked off the defending Stanley Cup champions, the Washington Capitals, in a hard-fought seven-game series in round one. And then they swept the New York Islanders four straight games in round number two. Now, goals four per game so far in these playoffs are averaging 3.09 per game, which is a very solid number, second best amongst playoff teams. And they're also being pretty stingy in the goals against category, only allowing an average of 2.27, which is also second best rate right behind the Bruins. So this series will feature the top two stingiest and top defensive teams in the playoffs here. Their power play, however, has been pretty weak, only 10.5%. For 14th best amongst playoff teams. So obviously that is not good. That is the worst amongst remaining playoff teams. Uh, so obviously Carolina needs to find a way to spark their power play. If they're going to stand a chance to win here. And the penalty kill hasn't been fabulous either. Averaging right now at 75% for 13th best amongst playoff teams. And if you take a look at their winning percentage from January 1 onwards to the end of the regular season. They had a winning percentage of 705 for 4th best. So they were one of the hottest teams. They continue to be just that. Now, as far as who's going to win this series, I do think in a lot of ways they match up well. Defensively speaking, they're both having solid playoff seasons. But obviously the Bruins right now have the edge in a couple different categories. One being special teams. Both the power play and the penalty kills so far has been stronger for sure. Uh, even though Carolina's been getting excellent goaltending out of first out of Marazic and then McElhaney. Tuka Rask has been probably the hottest goaltender uh, lately here in the playoffs too. So I do give them maybe a slight edge to Rask. But Carolina's goaltenders have been top-notch here so far as well. They're also scoring at a very similar rate too, uh, which in a lot of ways should make this a very evenly matched series. Now, one thing that a little trend that I've noticed so far, which may not mean much of anything, but if you notice in round one, the Islanders swept the Penguins. Then they had a layoff. Obviously, they wait for the next round to start. And then they themselves were swept here by the Hurricanes. So obviously, teams winning in a sweep, that layoff has hurt them so far. We'll see if that continues on here for Carolina or if they can break that trend here and put up a better fight 
against the Boston Bruins. But overall, all things considered, I am picking the Bruins to win this series, but I do think the Hurricanes will give them a pretty good matchup, a pretty good fight. I can see this series probably going six games. The reasons I'm picking to win the Bruins to win this series, a couple main factors for me is that the Carolina Hurricanes special teams have not been great, so the Bruins have a definite edge that way. The Bruins definitely have a major experience edge for sure. And thirdly, the layover might hurt the Hurricanes. I do have concerns. The fact they've been idle much longer, where the Bruins have been chugging along here, even though they've had to play more games, sometimes that keeps them sharper, and I just think they're going to have an edge here. So I am picking the Boston Bruins to win this series, I said likely in six games. Now let's jump over and take a look at the Western Conference Final here between the Sharks and the Blues. We'll get started by looking at the stats here for the San Jose Sharks. So the San Jose Sharks playoff recap here. They obviously had a hard-fought series with Vegas. Seven games in round one. Obviously ended in controversial fashion with that major penalty called on the Joe Pavelski incident against Cody Eakin of the Vegas Golden Knights, which we now know really wasn't or shouldn't have been at least a major penalty. But whatever, at the same time, I know the argument is there that Vegas shouldn't have allowed so many power play goals to allow the Sharks back in it. But certainly uh, some people thought maybe the Sharks didn't deserve to win that series, but nonetheless, they did. They moved on. And of course, they just beat the Colorado Avalanche again in seven games and really, unfortunately, there was a bit of a controversy last night. You've probably seen in Game 7. With the offside challenge against the Avalanche where Gabriel Landeskog was over at the bench. Uh, and there was a debate whether or not his skate was on a blue line or not on a blue line. And really, in my opinion, that whole rule is completely ridiculous. I'm not blaming the refs here or saying the Sharks shouldn't have won that game. But I'm personally just not a fan of these of these controversies uh, happening in important games. I like to see them adjust the rules to maybe make this so it doesn't happen. Uh, either way, that was kind of crazy. The Sharks keep continuing to win here. And even though it's somewhat controversial fashion, hopefully the rest of the way we don't have any calls that really may really impact uh, either of these conference finals or the Stanley Cup finals. Uh, hopefully we can escape that here the rest of the way through the playoffs. So far in these playoffs, the Sharks have been averaging 3.07 goals for and 3.7 goals against, which is the fourth best scoring and the 11th best on the goals against here. So obviously they're even Steven so far here in these playoffs. Power play has been clicking at a decent rate, 18.5% for 10th best. But, of course, they got four power play goals in that one sequence that we just mentioned there versus Vegas. So, obviously, that skews the numbers a little bit. Overall, the Sharks' power play hasn't been overly strong. The PK for them is also at 80.8%, ninth best. So, not fabulous there for sure. Uh, the Sharks have been winning, getting it done by committee. But special teams... Not overly strong for them right now. And lastly, here to look at the Sharks' winning percentage. They have a winning percentage of 634 since January the 1 to the end of the regular season, which was 7th best. Seems to be the lucky number here for San Jose. 7th best there. Game 7 victories. It's all coming up. 7th here, not only for the Sharks, but for the Blues as well, who just went through a big Game 7 victory too. So let's jump over now and take a look at the stats pack here for the St. Louis Blues. So in Round 1, the Blues defeated the Winnipeg Jets uh, in a 6-game series. Obviously, the Blues went into that series probably the favorite in a sense just because they were so hot down the stretch, even though Winnipeg... Probably would have been picked by many, myself included, to win, which has been uh, terribly wrong. Everybody's brackets are busted this year. Obviously, round two, we just seen them go through a very hard-fought seven-game series victory against the Dallas Stars. That game seven against Dallas was one of the most dominating performances I've seen. Obviously, I felt bad for Ben Bishop. He probably played the game of his life, but came up short in double overtime. But the, the Blues absolutely dominated the Stars. There was hardly any shots in the second third periods in the overtime. Uh, Dallas could just not get anything going. They were absolutely shut down and smothered by the Blues uh, in terrific fashion here. So St. Louis certainly deserved to win that game. Uh, so far in these playoffs, they're scoring 2.62 goals for per game for 10th best. And they're allowing 2.54 on average for 6th best. So not too bad, but not great. They could stay in the score a little bit more uh, if they, they continue winning here. Of course, the power play hasn't been great either. 17.1% for 11th best and a 75% PK, which is 12th best. So the St. Louis Blues don't have terrific special teams numbers either. So for the Sharks and Blues, neither one of them are really showing great numbers on either side. So that's going to make things relatively even in that sense. Obviously, like I said, the Sharks and Blues both have had uh, some hard-fought series here. The Sharks have played one more game than the Blues. They both have their fair share of injuries. Uh, the Sharks just got Captain Joe Pavelski back, coming off a Game 7 win. St. Louis is coming off a Game 7 win. So they're kind of both riding high, running on momentum here. So it certainly should be a very entertaining series. But the St. Louis Blues have a 722 winning percentage from January the 1 
on to the end of the regular season, which is tops amongst all remaining teams. It's second best in the NHL. During that time frame, the Tampa Bay Lightning did have a slightly better winning percentage, but St. Louis really turned things around. And right now, really the whole way through has been the hottest team here in the NHL ever since. They keep finding ways to get it done here in the playoffs. They're getting depth scoring. Their blue line's playing solid. Jordan Bennington's been absolutely phenomenal when he needed to be. Even there's times against Dallas, especially in Game 7. He didn't have a ton of shots, but even though he might have been cold at times, he got the job done and made the big saves. He's so calm and cool and collected back there in the net. Nothing seems to rattle him at all, uh, and he's been an absolute backbone for St. Louis. So I do think I give an edge here in the series to the Blues when it comes to goaltending. Jones has been better. Martin Jones certainly had his former question marks coming into the series after a subpar regular season. Uh, even shaky moments against Vegas early on as well. But he seems to have found his game has been much more steady for the Sharks really uh, after the probably the halfway point of that first round series. Overall, the Sharks have been scoring more goals and overall the Blues have been giving up less. So overall, that's going to be a very tight battle. I can see this being another potential seven game series. In my opinion, these two teams are incredibly evenly matched matched here uh, is going to be really really difficult to tell but i am going to pick the san jose sharks to come out on top likely in another given seven game series here and it's going to pit the bruins against the sharks jumbo joe thornton's going to get one more chance to play for lord stanley's cup against his former team the boston bruins that's going to be my prediction for round three but you know what it's been tough so far predicting these series Parity is at an all-time high here. Uh, these teams are so evenly matched that it is very difficult to do. I won't be surprised at all if I end up, you know, getting some of these wrong for sure. But of course, as always, I want to hear your thoughts and your opinions. Who are you picking to win these conference finals? And who do you think we're going to see square off for Lord Stanley's Cup here in the Stanley Cup Finals? If you're new to the channel, I hope you consider subscribing. We cover all 31 NHL teams, and there's plenty of content here for all hockey fans to enjoy. So if you're new, subscribe for more videos just like this one, and give the video a like if you enjoyed it as well. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.